going to be down on the floor, so I don't think you'll have to worry about him. He's also going to be walking amongst you, I'm sure. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming to the Biblio Youth Museum. It's really great to see all of you. This is a nice crowd on a Saturday. This is fantastic. Um, we're really excited to have a Malden alumna uh, here at the museum from uh, Central Arkansas. He and his wife, Melissa, live in El Paso, Arkansas. Uh, Rodney started a rap rehab of Central Arkansas a few years ago with $8,000 of his own money. Um, and he's been rehabbing birds of prey ever since. So he also is a docent at the Little Rock Museum in Arkansas. So you might want to go down and see one of his programs down there at some point. Um, I do want to let you know that he's a not-for-profit organization. He does this on his own dime. So there's a box in the back as you leave. If you want to thank him for his program and show him your support, you're welcome to put a couple of dollars in there. And all the money will go right directly to him. So uh, we would love to see you show your support to him. Um, that said, I'd like to introduce Freddie Paul. Let's give him a second. Good morning, it's nice to be here. Kind of like a little mini reunion for me. It's a lot of familiar faces I haven't seen quite since most of my family is here. Uh, with the exception of three family members, my entire immediate family. Uh, like she said, we live in Central Island, Arkansas, a little town called El Paso. Uh, it's about as pulled up as you can get. It's really small. We do have a stoplight, and we do have a McDonald's inside our shell station. <laughs> Anyway, it's about a four-hour drive from here, and we drove up here yesterday with these five birds. And uh, we stopped in Kennett. That was the only stop we made. Uh, up until then, we had a vent window open in the back of the car. And we stopped in Kennett. That's when all the smells kind of wafted up the from the car. Now, the birds don't smell. It's their poop. So, speaking of poop, these birds will poop during today's program. And uh, also, this is especially for you younger ones and everybody here on the front row, hold your finger up. What do you have on your end of your finger besides a finger? Meat. Okay, these birds I brought with me today are meat eaters. <laughs> so when I walk by you with a bird, don't stick your meat out. These birds will bite. Okay, we brought nothing but raptors. By the way, we specialize in raptors only. We don't do songbirds, we don't do waterfowl. To me, the only common thing between a songbird and a raptor is feathers. They're two totally different animals as far as diets and care goes. Now, while we do the raptor rehab in Central Arkansas, it's our goal to take in injured or sick or orphaned raptors, release them, uh, raise them, and, uh, nurse them back to health, and release them back into the wild. But that's not always possible. Okay, the four birds, actually the five birds I have with me today, are not releasable. They are strictly education tools. And I also want you to understand that, like I said, these are tools of mine, they are not pets. Birds are not pets, they're education tools. Okay, who can name a bird of prey for me? By the way, my programs are interactive. Ask all the questions you want. Uh, if you ask me a question I don't have an answer for, or make something up that'll sound really cool, you can leave it anyway. <laughs> okay, who can name a bird of prey? Eagle? What else? Uh, owl. Owl? Way back in the back, blue shirt. Vulture? Vulture, okay. One more right here. Raptor? No. What is a raptor? What, what, what is a raptor? A what kind of bird is a raptor? Okay, raptors are birds of prey that include hawks, owls, falcons, eagles, vultures, ospreys. And the thing they have all have in common is they are meat eaters. That's why I told you not to hold up your meat. Now, I brought some really cool feathers with me today. Who would like to take a feather home off a bird of prey? There's you one. There's you one. You can have one. You can have one. Who wants a bald eagle feather? Me. Who wants a bald eagle feather right here? Okay. Now, everybody I just hang, handed a feather to, stand up for me. Okay. Anything to do with a bird of prey or a raptor is against the law unless you have a permit, such as I do. Okay. Everybody with a feather, hold your feather up. You are now subject to federal and state fines in prison time. <laughs> you are really special because you have a bald eagle feather. You are going to jail's basement. <laughs> Would you like to keep your feathers back? Yes. <laughs> it's really funny. 
I did a program last or two weeks ago at school, and I had one of the feathers for a little girl. As soon as I told her she could go to jail, she immediately turned to her friend next to her and said, Here, you want this? <laughs> Uh, three years ago in Mississippi, there was a pawn shop owner had several bald eagle feathers because it's cool. Everybody would like their bald eagle feathers. Cost him over six thousand dollars in fines. Right now in Arkansas, in the state penitentiary, we have a gentleman doing a five-year prison sentence for killing a bald eagle. That also cost him over two hundred thousand dollars in fines, and he will never hunt in Arkansas again. Now, that being said, I know everybody's anxious to see a bird. <coughs> Okay, birds are just like us. They have personalities. <clears throat> By the way, if one of my birds drops a feather, we lose up and have it back. Anyway, the birds are just like us. They're temperamental. They get grouchy. And I've kind of changed my line up today about how I'm going to get my birds out. I'm going to get the grouchy one out first. <laughs> By the way, all the birds I have with me, with the exception of the one I'm getting out, are all native to Arkansas, and you have the exact same birds here in Missouri.
Now we have two of these at the Little Rock Zoo. As Patsy said, I'm also a docent at the Little Rock Zoo, and in being a docent at the zoo, I work with the education department there, and it has its perks, which I'll show you later. Being at the zoo. Anyway, we have two of these birds at the zoo, and they're pretty much the same temperament as the Phoenix. That's the way this bird's name is Phoenix. Any questions about a hair stop? Pardon? Right up there. Yeah, what's your cool chair? I would like to have a chair. That's a good question. In the wild, all birds of prey, hawks, owls, falcons, vultures, eagles, only 25% of has their second birthday in the wild. Now, the most prevalent injury we see at our rehab facility is birds getting hit by cars. About 95% of all of our intakes are hit by cars. So in the ca in captivity, this bird can live to be 20, 25 years old. Okay, now, like I said, Sarah is highly trained. We work for hours. <laughs> bird that we have to rehab right now, we are allowed to have four feathers off that bird. As soon as we release that bird, the bird is euthanized or dies, I have to destroy the feathers, otherwise I am breaking the water. Okay, <clears throat> which by the way, we have all these birds in rehab right now. Okay, who knows what kind of bird uh, Sarah is holding? Owl! Owl! owl. What kind of owl? Barn owl. Barn owl. How can we call it barn owl? How can we call it a barn owl? It lives in barns. It lives in a barn, that's right. This is a barn owl. This is Cheyenne. Cheyenne just turned uh, four years old. She does live not live in a barn owl, obviously. But barn owls typically do build their nest in structures. That's why we call them barn owls. Anyway, Cheyenne, her story is when she was a little chick, a uh, farming couple in Paragold, like you know where Paragold's at, uh, found her in a grain bin and they took her home. And they actually went on the internet and found out what they ate. And they actually fed her the proper diet. They didn't know they were breaking the law raising this bird. Anyway, the bird uh, grew up and they thought she was big enough to be released. And anyway, Cheyenne cannot hunt. Cheyenne does not know how to hunt. She has no hunting skills. So she is what we call an imprint. Now, imprint amongst animals is when the animal is born and it opens its eyes and sees another one. Your mama. I'm mama. I'm this bird's mama. She relies, man, all the birds rely on us, but her more so than the others. They rely, she relies on us. She really relies on us for everything, all of her care. Uh, she's perfectly flighted. If she were to get released or escape from us, she would probably be dead in four or five days. She'd starve to death. Now, is this a boy or girl? Who thinks it's boy? How do you think it's boy? Who thinks it's a girl? Because I called it Cheyenne, right? Uh, okay, I kind of let the cat out of the bag. Okay, with the birds of prey, it's extremely hard to tell the sex of a bird by their color. Uh, everybody knows our songbirds, us guys, we're the pretty ones, right? Okay, that's not necessarily true with the uh, birds of prey. The birds of prey, with a couple of exceptions, are now being one in the falcon family. It's almost impossible to distinguish a male from a female by the color of their own. Now, the biggest indicator of the sex is the size of the bird. With the birds of prey, the females are the big strong ones, and the males were the weaker ones. The reason behind that is because the females take are the primary caregivers for the babies. Now back to the barn now, see if we can get her to look at We're pretty sure the lady that raised her carried her around the house. Hi, Martin. 